Have you ever felt like maybe there was a best stretch or exercise for you based on your alignment and your posture? See, we all have different muscular imbalances and how we respond to a certain stretch or exercise could be different for each of us based on those muscular imbalances. And today, I'm gonna to talk about the two extremes of when the neck comes too far forward or some people have more of a very upright military neck where it almost comes too far backwards uh, and they don't have enough of a curvature in their neck. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the consequences of those and I'm gonna talk about how we could correct those. Most therapists will call the extremes of the head going forward like this, an anterior head carriage, and the extreme of this here, a, uh, a flat back or a military type neck posture. And each of these have certain consequences on how they stress the spine. Uh, similar to what we talked about in the pelvis, those different uh, posture types and through here, if the head comes too far forward and like this, well, it stresses the small joints on the back of the spine again, and it closes up the spaces that the nerves come through. And if they've got more of the military neck or this ramrod spine that's in there, they don't have the nice curvature of the spine that we should have. We should have a slight curvature of the spine there, and it puts more forces uh, straight through the spine, makes us more susceptible to disc injuries. Again, just like in the lower part of the pelvis, there are other factors and influences, but those are just some little slight things that might cause those uh, extra and added forces. So for each of these, we might wanna choose some different stretches and exercises. So when the head comes too far forward like this, they call that uh, the anterior head posture, uh, and some people will call it an upper crossed syndrome. And they call it that because the uh, muscular imbalances are in this cross pattern, where when we come forward like this, the shoulders also usually come forward. This is of course an extreme. Most people don't walk around like this here, but I wanna show you the extreme example so you understand this. We're usually tight in the front of the chest here that pulls our uh, shoulders forward. And we're usually tight up and through here in the neck because as we, you know, devices like this, and then I gotta look forward, we do that. And so we get all of this tightness and tension in here. So we're tight here. A lot of times might even be tight up in here. The shoulders might come up, but we're tight in here and it makes this cross pattern. Where the weaknesses are on this one are in the very deep front part of the neck. And I'm not talking about your throat right here. I'm talking behind the throat. So let's say your throat's right here. Behind all of that, you've got muscles on the very deep front part of your neck. They're called the deep neck flexors. Those are usually weak. And the muscles in between our shoulder blade, if I show you here, so these are weak. And then the muscles in between our shoulder blade are usually weak because we're pulled forward like this and we wanna pull those back. And so again, weak here, weak here, and it has that cross. So they call it this upper crossed syndrome. So for that particular pattern, we want to choose stretches that would stretch here and that would stretch the front of our shoulders here to get those shoulders back. And we would want to choose exercises that get those deep neck flexors. There's lots of exercises we could get for the deep neck flexors. If we live here, we want to do this. And we want to choose exercises that will strengthen in between our shoulder blades. Okay, so for the other one, the very upright military neck, it's less common, but it exists. These people, they're very tall and you know they almost look elegant in through there. Well, there are consequences to that again, and they almost have the, the opposite muscle imbalances. So they're usually very pulled back in their shoulder blades. We don't necessarily need to be pulled back like this. There should be a slight tilt of the shoulders going forward. Very subtle, but it should be slight. And so if we're pulled back like this too much, there are consequences to that. So they might almost wanna stretch the back of that shoulder in through there. Um, they're usually needing strengthening in through here. Uh, as a chiropractor, I do a lot of manual therapies to try to reshape their neck to get it back, uh, to get that curvature back in through there. Um, and they're gonna need some stretching through the front of the neck uh, quite often. And the strengthening uh, also is going to be in a muscle usually, not always, everybody's a little bit different, but a lot of times in the front of the shoulder blade that comes forward like this. Uh, it's called the serratus anterior and that muscle usually needs some strengthening. If you want to learn these stretches and these exercises for these uh, two different posture types, 
Check out the next videos on best stretches and exercises for anterior head carriage or upper cross syndrome and for this uh, upright military neck posture. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you do not like this video, eh, boo-hoo, leave a comment. Let me know what I can do better.